Hi. And um, yeah, I, I came across her work in a magazine that she will talk about in her presentation that has a very distinct and I feel very refreshing approach to fashion and fashion photography as well. Okay. Teresa. Um, hi. This is very unusual for me. Usually I'm behind the camera, so I'm a bit nervous. Um, yeah, I'm London based and I'm probably more like really within the fashion, fashion photography, the boring part. Um, and it's, um, so I brought a couple of projects with me. Some are true editorial, some are more commercial and some are private projects. And um, all of them are very dear to me because they're based all around something that I find very difficult, um, which starts with a model choice in the model, in the fashion industry, because I think being a woman myself, um, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of things, um, starting with age, that a lot of the girls are like 17, have to leave their home country, have to be alone for two months in a, somewhere they've never been before, um, get sexualized, have to wear clothes where I find are sometimes a bit unsuitable. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a broad variety of the models. Um, the first is an uh, editorial. It's for an Australian magazine. It's called Renaissance, and it's based on the beauty of age. So basically all the girls, uh, women, in the magazine are 35 plus. Um, so this is just an editorial shoot about this. And I approached the magazine actually because when I found out about them, I, I just really thought it's a beautiful idea, especially because usually the woman who is able to purchase the clothes, the actual customer, is not a 17-year-old girl. She is usually someone who works, is able to afford very, very expensive clothing, and I don't think that is possible when you, I don't know. A student. I wasn't able to afford those clothes when I was a student back then, even though if I would have loved to. And um, I don't know, this lady, for example, she is 38. She's a part-time model. She's also part of the Edinburgh Fashion Council. She leads the whole thing. Um, she's a mother of two sons, and working with her was an absolute pleasure. And I think you can tell in the way how she moves, and she made everything unbelievably easy, and she has this great body awareness, and She's proud of who she is. This is um, an Instagram campaign for a shoe brand. Um, it's called By Far. And I just absolutely love those images because all of them are retouch free. Um, we had to shoot, I think, 60 images within five hours, which is a lot of work that you have to go through. And we choose a model. She's as well, 38 years old. On the day of the shoot, she was actually pregnant. And, for example, I love the image where she's smiling. It kind of happened that her son was on set, that she's still breastfeeding, and he saw her topless, and I think he was a bit like, woo, food served. Um, so we had to um, kind of get him off set, and I think she was really, it, it's literally a photo that happened in the moment when she was like, oh my god, my son is trying to eat. Um, yeah, and I think in general, the working with the brand as well, I really enjoy it because I think they're all women and I think they're also very aware of their customer and I'm not sure if they would agree with having... Um, it's sometimes difficult the way a woman is portrayed within the industry because like I said already, it's not the customer in the end and I think if you want to buy a product and I can't relate to it if I see someone who's too young in the product itself. And as well, it's sometimes people forget just to have fun and they lose a little bit of track what's normal and what's not. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the images and I think they're fun to look at and I don't know, it was just, again, very, very easy working with her. She's been a model since she's, I don't know, 18, I think, and it just makes things very easy. This as well is just a good example for it. It's um, a commercial shoot. It's an online shop for a Parisian brand called Jacquemus. And the model that we used, um, I think, 
is around 40 as well. She used to be huge back in the 90s. She has a child as well. Um, and I think she's been off the market, if you can say it like this, for several years. And she just, I think two years, started modeling again. And I just absolutely enjoyed working with her because it's just very professional. And also the way how they treat their bodies, they don't really starve themselves. They do sports. And I think it's a very, very important thing to keep in mind when you work in the industry because there's so many young girls who get pushed from their model agents or just from the idea that we put out there to have this unhealthy relationship to your own body. And I also think the more mature you are and the older you get, you, you value yourself differently and you do things for you and not for what society expects you to do. Um, saying this, this is, this for example, it's an editorial as well. Um, it's actually with a friend of mine. She's 27 and I just enjoy working with her. All the images are as well retouch free and they're based around the idea that, um, I w like I've been talking with her a bit and she's been modeling since she's 17 and she was very honest with me and she said, yes, at the beginning I starved myself and I did a lot of things that were unhealthy and you say yes to a lot of projects that photographers are pushing you to and you feel uncomfortable about this. You, you're very self-aware, aware, but I think in a very unhealthy way. And I tried to create together with her like this series of photos, which I think show that she's proud of who she is now, and she's still an absolutely beautiful person. And um, for example, this one image with the flower, I'm not sure if you can see what it is, but it's like, when you sit down and you have a little bit of fat rolls. I mean, it's the most normal thing. You can be the skinniest person ever, but you will have that. And I just love the image because it's still beautiful. And um, I think not everybody kind of shares the idea of when a photographer comes up and be like, hey, so I have this amazing idea. Let's stick some flour into a part that you might don't like too much. But um, I don't know. It was really, really great working with her. And, yeah. I'm very proud of the series because I think it, it brings a good message across. Um, this as well is a private project um, because I feel like in most of my work I try to introduce a little bit of humor to again remind of something very normal and the awareness of how you feel in your body. So the series I call Breakfast. Um, so we're having ham on toast. Um, literally ham on toast. We have pain perdu, which is uh, French toast. So in French, kind of translated a little bit as um, the lost or forgotten bread. Um, honey fingers, um, eggs on legs, <laughs> and avocado sandwich. Um, this is something I would like to continue, maybe also with completely different models. And I, I don't know, I really want to explore more actual different sizes, colors, um, working with scars. And I think it's, it's a nice approach to reminding that it can still be a little bit of fun. Um, this is an editorial that we called Her. I did together with a stylist and we wanted to recreate the view of two lovers. So, um, because I think as well, very often, everything gets very, very, very sexualized in fashion and you are asked to wear this ridiculously tiny pieces of fabric and it's sometimes a bit too much, I think. So we wanted to work with a sty styling and the clothing as well of like two people who know each other very, very well and you kind of stop or didn't even start wearing this kinky underwear for your partner. So we worked with like big knickers and, and it becomes more into the feeling of when you're very close with someone and you're super comfortable and sometimes it's just the gaze of your lover looking over little details on your body and uh, just creating beautiful images with very normal clothing. Yeah, that's it for me so far. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just say a second? Um, yeah, I, you know what, I'm so, like, it's so great to see how you managed to build this 
approach into your commercial project as well as your your private project. Yeah. Uh, because I guess um, you made a very strong point for the responsibility that we have as photographers, magazine makers, art directors, etc., to uh, essentially offer an alternative. You know, and I guess it's it's from everything that we've seen, it shows a variety of possibilities. Um, and this this approach is something that you know, if you if you challenge yourself, if you challenge the people that you work with, even your clients, I guess there's, I mean, there's a possibility for a, a more realistic uh, way of talking about and, and yeah. visualizing fashion. Uh, no, definitely. I mean, it really c often comes to a point when, um, so I had, for example, one shoot, it was um, for a very, very big international magazine, and we didn't have a chance of doing a casting, which usually means you invite some girls over, you meet them, you speak to them, you understand. It's sometimes even nice to be able to talk to them before because um, you spend eight hours or even longer together um, and you want to get on with the people you're working with and you want to make sure they understand you understand each other and you I don't want to put anyone in a really awkward situation um, we didn't have a chance to do that so you usually choose from a body of work uh, of girls online um, which is this one girl and she's absolutely stunning in pictures I mean her eyes incredible she comes on set and I was literally wondering when was the last time she's been eating. Um, it was very difficult working with her because the clothes didn't look good on her and we had to um, spend a lot of time and money into post-production just to make her look bigger. And I, it really upset me because I think it's not really her choice even to look like this, but I think it starts already within the model agency who they get on board and how they promote them. And I just think it's it's getting better and I'm really happy about this. And um, because I think like this whole idea of who's very, very beautiful and you need to look like this, it's very old fashioned and it's very 90s and it's, I mean, I think it's just not a good approach. And I'm always really happy when I meet a client who let me have a say within a casting as well, because maybe because I'm a woman in the industry and I, know how I feel about myself and I think it's not fair on anyone, on the people working there or on the people who see the images in the end. It's so. Totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.